right, so the suspension's done. And you can hear, it's pretty quiet. You might hear my, my hard top flexing, but that's about it. All the clunking and squeaking from the back is now gone. Uh, the ride is very smooth. I'm very happy with how everything came out. Uh, I've been taking it for a drive around town. I'm really enjoying how they feel so far. I've had the car corner balanced and aligned and uh, very happy with the results. It's really nice to drive. Uh, I've got it set pretty low right now, so it's in a kind of a comfort mode right now. And I'm uh, really have no problem with dailying it like this. This is very comfortable. Uh, I'm gonna test it through a bunch of conditions this weekend. Uh, right now, like I said, I'm doing city driving. I'm about to get on the freeway. And I've got a bit of a secret location that I'm gonna go to here. I'm not gonna reveal it quite yet, but uh, coming up, we'll uh, let you know where we're really gonna test this and we're gonna take it on a nice, long, spirited drive this weekend and really put this thing through the motions, so. I think this is the part I love the most about the new shocks. I'm driving down the freeway and this thing is totally smooth. This is great for taking a road trip. I've got no problem with how it rides right now. I'll just say this, right now I'm going to a friend's house. Tomorrow morning we're gonna get up and we're gonna do a really, really long drive on some really epic roads. And uh, we're gonna put this thing through its paces and we're gonna see how it performs. Hey everybody, Zeke from the future. I'm actually on my way home now from the drive. It's already done, it was fantastic. I had a great time and uh, very happy with how the shocks perform. I actually broke them in a little more and now I'm on the highway using the same settings that I just used for that drive. And this is perfectly comfortable and smooth. I can see taking road trips in this car. And that note is a good opportunity for me to announce that I have plans to go to the Miata reunion this October in Sonoma. And I hope to see some of you guys there. I think what we need to do now is we need to jump to the drive in the secret location. So let's go there now. And the secret location is Oregon, yeah. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm doing the pre-drive for my next installment of Oregon Insanity. I'm going through some pretty crazy roads right now. Uh, I dialed up the suspension a few notches, so uh, I'll put my settings uh, in, the, in the sidebar here. But uh, yeah, I'm going through some pretty fun roads right now and this suspension is performing beautifully. Uh, I'm really enjoying this uh, and uh, I'm gonna keep reporting on this as I go through the day. Uh, it's a little wet right now so I can't really go too crazy but uh, for what I have right now, I'm really enjoying this. This is, uh, this has really done a number on my car and it's uh, really enjoyable. And it's, it's still very comfortable. I could dial it up a lot. I could uh, stiffen up the suspension way more than it is now. But, uh, but yeah, this is, this is awesome. I love this. <laughs> All right, so now I'm on one of my favorite sections of road you can see in front of me. I uh, show you the front view. I've got a Porsche Boxster in front of me. It's a 718 Boxster. So I'm gonna see if I can keep up with him on this road. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Boxster's owned by my friend Adam, and if you watched my Miata Alternatives video, he's the guy who couldn't decide between a Miata and a Boxster, so he bought both. He also has an ND. Of course, the Boxster is going to smoke my car on acceleration, but since the pavement's still damp, we're taking it pretty easy. And you can see when he hits a straightaway, he loses me pretty fast. We made a rest stop in Vernonia. But little did we realize the next section of road was going to present us with a few challenges. 
the first issue we discovered once we came across some decent sized bumps in the road. And then we ran into a problem that would completely change our route. Did you see that sign? It said timber road closed at Cochrane Road. Yeah, no access to Highway 6, which means we can't go this route. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer because that's a really fun road, really tight turns. But, uh, oh well. Update number two, this whole loop. Not going to work. We're just going to have to cut it from the drive. Uh, I'm behind two campers right now and this is slow going. This is super boring. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go a different route. We're going to add another section in that's super fun. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get this all done today. The next time we stopped I looked to see where my tire was rubbing. And the only place I could find was on the driver's side front fender right here. If you look closer you can see why. And once I replace my bumper, this isn't going to be an issue. After a quick break, we headed out towards our lunch stop. And as we left the wildlife area, we got an awesome view of a huge herd of elk grazing alongside the road. The rain had now stopped, so it's time for some top-down driving and some extremely fun This section of road has some fantastic corners and it really let me put the shocks to the test. I think the look on my face says how well that went. The route I set up for this drive has an absolutely stupid amount of curbs and is a blast to drive in a Miata. stopped in Seaside for a lunch break and after a quick bite we set out on another one of my favorite roads in Oregon. 
what drive would be complete without Highway 53? <laughs> this is my favorite one. Every long drive I host always has some sort of shenanigans that occur, and this drive was no exception. As we started off on Highway 53, we quickly came up behind a slow SUV. He pulled off shortly afterwards, right as we hit mile marker 3 on the road. Then we came around the corner to a sign that says BUMP. And just a few yards ahead, there was a large dip in the road. I scraped on that one. <laughs> and immediately following that, I went through a couple of corners and nearly got hit by this pickup towing a trailer that was well across the center line. That's Adam's wife, Isla, on the radio. Not to mention, he was like a foot and a half into my lane. <laughs> we traveled a little farther and then a big white car went flying past us in the passing zone. We weren't really going slow here, but you can see how much faster the mess he was going. That's okay. We decided he can get the ticket instead of us. The rest of the drive was pretty much free of drama, and we ended on my favorite section of road going through Klatskanai. And by the way, I found out I had been saying that wrong, and that is the correct way to pronounce it. We'll cover the actual drive a little more extensively when I share my video of the Oregon Insanity Drive. This is always a fun road to drive on, and it all went great until we came across a slow minivan, and that was the end of the fun. So what is my assessment of these shocks? I think they're fantastic. I love them. It was worth every penny. It was worth all the work I had to put into it, and I think this is a way better car now. I would totally do it again. I would highly recommend these. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for a set of inexpensive coilovers, I think this is a good choice. So uh, anyway, uh, that's all I have for today, and we'll see you next time.